Hello everyone, welcome to Chembrain YouTube channel, your only ultimate destination for learning chemical engineering and chemistry courses. I am happy to see you here once again on my channel. My name is Andy Kofi Ago, and today I'll be taking you through how to do a detailed approach for solving limiting reactants. So let's assume that we want to produce a liquid phosphorus chloride by a direct combination of phosphorus and chlorine. Okay. Now the question says, what is the maximum mass of phosphorus chloride that can be obtained from 125 gram of phosphorus and 323 gram of chlorine? Okay. So now what we need to do first is we need to check the reaction given that if the number of elements at the reactant side is the same as the number of elements at the product side which means we want to ensure that the reaction is well balanced okay so now we have four of phosphorus at the reactant side we have four of phosphorus at the product side now let's do for chlorine we have six times two is 12 so we have 12 of chlorine at the reactant side we have four times three is 12 we have 12 of chlorine at the product side very good now what do we also need to do we also need to check whether we also need to check which of these two reactants is a limiting reactant and this is very important to chemical engineers and chemists why because the limiting reactant will be able to provide us a more accurate or information about the product or the mass of the product and the amount of the excess reactant that reacted with the that reacted to form the product okay so now let me take you to a practical world. In the practical world, we do actually not measure the moles, but we measure or we weigh the mass. Okay. So now let's assume that our starting material, we took 10 gram or we weighed 10 gram of phosphorus and a balance. Okay. And now we are assuming that phosphorus is the limiting reactant here. Then we are expecting that at the end of the reaction, all the 10 gram of phosphorus that we weighed on the balance will be converted into phosphorus chloride which is the product so now if we are able to weigh the phosphorus chloride at the lab or at the industry then by difference we'll be able to know the exact amount of the chlorine that is the mass of chlorine that reacted with the 10 gram of the phosphorus we weighed to form the product of phosphorus chloride Yes, we can also use chlorine, which is the SS to compare to the product. But what are we going to incur? We are going to incur a whole lot of inaccuracies, errors in our masses. Okay, so now it is important. Note, it is very important. Always compare the limiting reactant to the product when we want to calculate for the mass of the product we have formed. Okay. So now the first step is theoretically, we need to convert the initial masses of phosphorus and chlorine to moles. How do we do that? We need to find the molar mass of phosphorus and we have 30.9 gram per mole approximately. Now phosphorus here is in quadrant. So we have to multiply by a factor of four and we have one, two, three point six gram per mole. Now moles can be expressed as mass over molar mass. Most often, the standard unit of molar mass is in gram per mole, okay? So, we also need to check the unit of our mass, okay? Now, we need to leave our unit in gram so that we can have an easy cancellation. So, once we substitute the actual masses of phosphorus, then we have 1.01 as the initial moles of phosphorus. Let's do same for chlorine. Now, chlorine has... Chlorine as an element has a molar mass of 35.45 gram per mole. Now, chlorine here is existing as a diatomic. Okay, so now we need to multiply by a factor of 2. So once we do that, we have 70.9 gram per mole. Also expressing it in the form of moles, we have mass over molar mass. Once we substitute the actual values, then we have 4.55 as the initial moles of chlorine. Now, one can end here and conclude by saying that since we have a less initial moles of chlorine of 4.55, when we compare it to the stoichiometric coefficient of chlorine as 6, 
then it means that chlorine is a limiting reactant. However, this may sound unclear to someone who is now learning chemical engineering and chemistry courses or trying to appreciate reaction engineering. Okay, so in that case, I'll take my time to work you through so that we'll be able to determine the limiting reactant and the SS reactant by values. Okay, so now the second step we need to do is to find the most of the reactant during the reaction or the most of the reactant that reacted. So to do so, we need to compare the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, so in the reaction, we have one moles of phosphorus reacting with six moles of chlorine. So this is how we write one moles of phosphorus reacting with six moles of chlorine. Okay, so now if we have an initial moles of phosphorus as 1.011 moles, then what will be the most of chlorine that reacted? Let's do same for chlorine. If we have one mole of phosphorus reacting with six moles of chlorine from the stoichiometric equation, okay? Then if we have an initial moles of 4.55 moles of chlorine, what will be the moles of phosphorus that reacted? Now let us find out. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to do cross multiplication. Okay, that is proportion. We need to do some cross multiplication. And once we do cross multiplication, we have 1.011 moles of phosphorus multiplying 6 moles of chlorine over 1 moles of phosphorus. And we could clearly see moles of phosphorus cancels out. Then we have chlorine. So we have 6.066 moles of chlorine. Okay, now let's do same for phosphorus. Once we also do cross multiplication over here, then we have one moles of phosphorus reacting with 4.55 moles of chlorine all over six moles of chlorine. So the moles of chlorine and moles of chlorine cancel out. Then we have 0.758 moles of phosphorus that reacted. Okay, now what, what is the idea here? What is the point we are looking out for? We are looking at for what moles did not react or what is the most of phosphorus or chlorine that did not take part in the reaction and how do we find out now we can use this uh, equation as moles unreacted should be the initial moles minus the moles that reacted let's do this simple calculation so now let's take for instance phosphorus the initial moles is 1.011 okay minus what is the moles of phosphorus that reacted so this is the most of phosphorus that reacted we have 0 0.758 okay and once we do that we have approximately 0 0.253 that is phosphorus okay now let's do same for chlorine what is the initial moles of chlorine we have 4.55 4.55 okay now minus what is the most of chlorine that reacted we have 6.066 and once we do this we have negative 1.516 great now based on these values we can clearly say that chlorine is the limiting reactant why because the negative value here indicates that chlorine was totally depleted or totally finished in the course of the reaction okay most often too we can also have a value of zero which means that that reactant was finished in the course of what reaction okay so now that we have been able to uh, find out chlorine as the limiting reactant then we can compare from the equation the stoichiometric coefficient of chlorine to that of phosphorus chloride so let's do that so now from the equation we have six moles of chlorine producing four moles of phosphorus chloride so we have six moles of chlorine producing four moles of phosphorus chloride okay so if we have initial moles of chlorine as 4.55 then what will be the most of phosphorus chloride produced so by cross multiplication or proportion we have 4.55 as the initial moles of chlorine times the four moles of phosphorus chloride over four six moles of phosphorus chloride so moles of chlorine and moles of chlorine cancel out now we have 3.033 moles of phosphorus what chloride 
Now, what is the mass? The mass of phosphorus chloride can be represented as the moles of phosphorus chloride times the molar mass of the phosphorus chloride. Okay. And once we calculate for the molar mass of phosphorus chloride, we have 137.25 gram per mole. That is approximately. Now, to multiply by the moles of which we have found here, we can accurately get a value of 416.3 gram phosphorus chloride. I hope I hope you really enjoyed today's lesson. Please kindly like and subscribe for more explicit content. Thank you all for watching.